Okay. All right. So let's do an ex let's do some more examples of Ashwini Nakshatra. So remember, it's the horsemen, the the it's the star of um, villages and armies. So it's the star of uh, it's an externalized star, like we said earlier. It's kind of more extroverted. It wants to like develop its skills. It wants to um, you know explore like horse uh, horses again. Horses symbolize power. We still call things when we measure trucks or, you know, cars, it's like it has this many horsepower. You know, it still is this omen of power. And to the American Indians, horses symbolize power. They would have a saying, stealing horses is stealing power. But you have to remember that before there were cars and things, horses were like a heavenly power. They were a heavenly vehicle that propelled you. The sun god in Vedic, Vedic philosophy is all about the horse, if you didn't know. There's a major horse sacrifice that the ancient Vedic kings would do every year. Um, the, the sun is said to drive on a seven horse drawn chariot. So the sun is the prime, one of the prime gods of this world. And it's, you know, this divine light that never stops. And it's said thought to be being propelled by these seven horse drawn chariots, which is of course the chakras. And it's also quite cool how this, you know, the seven chakras, the sun is moving up and down those, creating the zodiac. Um, and this also correlates to the spine and the chakras. Each chakra has a positive and a negative polarity. And that's like each sign or each planet has like, you know, like we're in Gemini right now. Gemini is the positive polarity of the throat chakra. Virgo is the negative one. Um, so, you know, horses are really, really, really important in Vedic philosophy and Vedic culture, and they were these divine heavenly vehicles. And so one of the things about this star is it is also a great star for travel and for locomotion. Like if you're starting a journey, it can be great to start it with Ashwini because it's a swift, fast nakshatra. And also the previous one, Revati, is the star. We're going to come to that later, but it's the star of Kushan, who's like the deity, like the shepherd deity who protects travelers. Now, um, let's go right into more examples. So this is one of the best examples, Samuel Hanuman, the guy that invented homeopathy, the guy that discovered homeopathy. Remember how Ashwini are the healers? They are the physicians of the gods. How cool is it that the guy that's pretty much the best healer of the modern day era, or the best healer that we really have the birth chart of, unless there is the chart of Hippocrates. I don't know if that's known. Um, I guess all I'm getting at is homeopathy is like when you start to wake up in this world, you start one of the first things you start to realize is like, you know, big pharma and the pharmaceutical industry is a nightmare and it's written and it's, you know, run by really some of those evil people on the planet. It's very corrupt. Um, you know, like they, they create ways so that they don't even have to be responsible for their medicines. Um, they somehow made it to where no one can say anything cures any disease in America, unless it is a pharmaceutical. It's just this crazy world. Um, like for, you know, alternative healers, it's, it's really quite a, quite a wild scene. And when you wake up and you start to get past all this, one of the main things a lot of you guys are going to come across is homeopathy. And I first, when I first heard about homeopathy, I was being, you know, kind of brainwashed by society. Whenever it would get mentioned, it would be mentioned in this kind of like laughing, like mocking way. But homeopathy is actually the probably the most single-handed best healing system on the planet. It's probably even more effective than Ayurveda in an overall sense. And even in India, you'd think that Ayurveda is like the big thing everyone's doing. But actually, in India, a lot of people are getting better results from homeopathy. Not to say Ayurveda is not good, but it's just that homeopathy really is profound and amazing. And it's a newer system. And it's based on the idea of uh, resonance and energy medicine. So like you can have a fever and there's like, okay, start. You could be in perfectly good health and you can eat a certain bark from a tree and it will actually cause you to have a fever. What's crazy is if you have a fever and you take that bark, it will cure your fever because it's giving you more of this fever energy. But your body, if your body's giving you a fever, you have to acknowledge that my body needs to make a fever. It needs to resonate with this burning detoxifying energy. So you actually give it something that gives it more of that energy and it actually heals more. So home, homo means same. So homeopathy means the same path, the same thing that hurt you is what heals you. 
And this is what astrology validates is that, okay, the Rahu, K2, all these same issues that have wounded you are what you eventually have to kind of embrace and come through in order to heal. Carl Jung said it too. The cave which you're most afraid to enter is the one that holds the treasure you seek the most or something like that. <clears throat> it's a big thing in psychology. So wait, anyways, moving on. This Samuel Hanuman has his son, which is a natural planet of yourself, you know, and it's exalted and it's in Ashwini and in the fifth house, which has to do with the higher self and co-creating with God and so and creating a kingdom. And so created this entire kingdom. And what he also has is he has Mercury and the moon together. Uh, the moon and Mercury is a, is a healing placement uh, in the Jaimini system. If you're very curious on that, take the Ernst Wilhelm audio courses on Jaimini to learn about how, how to create the placements for a career healer. But moon and Mercury are involved in that. So very cool. So I'm, I'll try to be real quick but because uh, <clears throat> i got a lot more examples to go through. But wow, how cool is it that the star that has to do with being the, the divine physician, the healer. Um, it has, you know, Samuel Hanuman, you know, um, he has that. And of course, I know a lot of doctors and healers and clients just in general that have a prominent Ashwini in their chart. Um, <clears throat> they don't, you don't have to be the, you know, it's not like you have to be like world famous, but just if you know doctors, nurses, things like that, they might have Ashwini prominent in their chart. This is Paul Revere. Paul Revere has his uh, K2 in Ashwini. So Paul Revere is famous for his Paul Revere's midnight ride. He rode the horse. He rang the bell to like tell everyone that the British were coming. <clears throat> How funny is it that he rode a horse and that he's like, you know, that's kind of what he's so well known for. I'm not going to go into a whole thing on Paul Revere. I, I haven't even read up on him since I was an, a kid in high school, but I just thought that was, how funny is it that that came up in my database? He came up with K2 in Ashwini. And so <clears throat> K2 is our security paradigm. So he was like trusting the horse and just, you know, that was part of his uh, his instinctive action, action, you know, at that, that late that night. Um, now this is the chart of Bobby Fischer. Remember, the horse headed means the powerful minded. This is the star of powerful mental activity. And so Bobby Fischer, one of the most genius people you know, basically the best chess player to ever live. Um, freakishly genius person. He has his moon in Ashwini. Moon is the mind and moon is exalted. So these are good examples. That's why I wanted to bring up, you know, and again, if you have a debilitated planet in Ashwini, you can have problems like Helen Keller had the I had blindness, you know, and she had a debilitated Saturn in Ashwini. So difficult health things, you know what I mean? But um but the moon exalted in Ashwini is showing like really, really good qualities of, of uh, connected to Bobby Fischer's moon or Manas or mind, you know, and we know that's true. Um, <clears throat> this is Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Once again, one of the most powerful, powerfully, you know, big name people in the, in the, in the world. And he has Mars, you know, in the 10th house in Ashwini with Saturn. And that's a, really strong you know that's just like a fighter that's a powerful person right there with mars um it, and it's mars both malefics in the 10th you know this is a bad dude he's gonna if this is a fist a cruel energy 10th house is your karma your actions to box people for a living is definitely a very cruel action so it's funny that he has saturn and mars up here and of course saturn's in kritika the cutters which is also quite uh fitting but he had that mars and ashwini swift and fast and um, it's also cool that he had K2 in Pisces because his footwork as a boxer was really profound. It's what he was really well known for his, you know, float like a butterfly, but sting like a bee sort of thing. His gracefulness with that, uh, K2 in Pisces as well. Um, so, you know, uh, one of the best boxers ever, Mars in Ashwini, you know, um, in the 10th. Now we come to... Now we come to Steve Jobs. He had also had Mars in Ashwini in its own sign and in the eighth house. And it's his Atmakarika. So, and it's with his moon. He is very, he was a very strong minded person. Um, but also very uh, like, you know, with that, with his moon, that, that really colored his moon with a much more of a cruel action oriented, 
person. So he was very action oriented, very, very much an accomplisher, a go getter, a mover and a shaker. But he also was kind of a cruel person and kind of a kind of a jerk. Um, and so you can kind of see that too, because of having the moon with Mars. Um, there's a famous story of him, and this kind of shows how strong his mind was in being determined to do what he wanted to do and to fix problems and to solve things and to be an Ashwini. He, uh, when they were making the iPhone, they made the iPhone and they presented it to him. It was like, this is the best we can do. This is the most like cutting edge technology. And he was like, make it smaller. And they were like, we can't make it smaller. <laughs> and he was like, I think you can make it smaller. And they're like, it's not possible. Or, uh, he grabbed the phone, he dropped it in an aquarium, a little fish tank, and it fell in. And he was like, see those bubbles? those bubbles coming out, that means you can make it smaller. <laughs> like, that's just a crazy story, if you think about it. Um, and, you know, because the air bubbles, that meant that there were air pockets in the phone. So there's still something that could be done to make it smaller. So that's just crazy. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's the kind of person he was. So uh, yeah, very Ashwini. And then, um, and then uh, John Lennon, he had his ascendant in Ashwini. Um, very, you know, he was also very like, uh, kind of horse headed, like wanted to show off. He needed the tournament. He needed the village. He needed to come into town to play the show, to get the respect, to get, you know, it's, it's actually a star of like com competition and, you know, like horses, like horses are kind of like, like, it, there's actually a funny thing about horses, just knowing their personality. I've been told this by people at least that know a lot more about horses is that, um, and, and animal rights people don't like to mention this, but horses love to just be doing something. Like they'll do anything. That's why they literally will go straight into war. They will literally go right into what they know is gonna kill them. But they just love to be on the go, moving, purposeful. Yes, we're doing it. You know, that's the kind of the attitude of a horse. And John Lennon carried that as well. He was the leader of the Beatles, you know, and he moved them, he made them go to the West, you know, and go to, the, you know, again, locomotion. They had to travel and do all these things. <clears throat> If he wasn't their front man, it might not have happened. Um, and then this is the final one. Ashwini, uh, my teacher, Ernst Wilhelm. My main teacher, at least. I mean, I've learned from a bunch of people, but uh, he is a profound healer. He's helped so many people heal. His Atmakarika Venus is in Ashwini. And in the eighth house with Mercury and Sun, and this is actually like a major astrology placement with the eighth house and the occult things. And so uh, he heals through the occult through like an energetic type of medicine. And really, I mean, take his uh, Rahu and Ketu courses if you really want to heal your psychology and his Lajitalia Vashtu courses. Those are a lot of stuff in astrology where it's like, oh, like, you know, you're going to wear a blue shirt tomorrow. Like that's cool technique, but it's like cookbook stuff. You know, if you really want to get to the meat of it and deep things and heal someone, his systems are what are best for that. Um, all right, cool. So those are just a bunch more examples for you guys. Hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you.